Also on our heat index this morning, a radically new fertility treatment. This is a revolutionary procedure that gives women who hope to get pregnant later in life an alternative to freezing their eggs. ABC's Rena Ninen has our story. To the outsider, little Gran is a typical four-year-old, curious. Energetic, adorable. He's our little miracle. He always will be. That's because Grant was among the first wave of babies in the world, conceived through the use of frozen ovary tissue. Freezing young ovary tissue and reimplanting it later is a relatively new concept, enabling women to freeze up to hundreds of thousands of eggs. When Amy was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma at the age of 19 and faced sterility, Dr. Sherman Silber of the Infertility Center of St. Louis recommended the revolutionary procedure. I told her I really didn't think this had much likelihood of working. It was very experimental, but it was all that we could do for her. 12 years later, she returned to Silber to have her frozen ovary tissue reimplanted. Soon after, her ovary began to function normally. In a matter of months, Grant was conceived the old-fashioned way. Ovary freezing has worked successfully, says Silver, for three out of the four patients he's tried it on. The procedure costs around $10,000, while egg freezing can cost up to $25,000. For Good Morning America, Rena Ninen, ABC News, New York. Joining us now is ABC News senior medical contributor, Dr. Jennifer Ashton. We all have a lot of questions about this. Let's get the to woman it. just said she considers this a miracle. Do you see it as a miracle? I think it's the wonder of modern medicine, science, and technology. It has been around for about 15 years. It's not totally mainstream yet, but just to clarify, we've all heard about freezing eggs, mm -hmm. where the individual eggs are extracted with a needle after a woman has had hormonal shots to stimulate those eggs. This is different. This is taking part or the entire ovary out of the body, freezing it, and then re-implanting it. It gets its new blood supply, it starts wow. producing hormones, and those eggs can be used nat more naturally. The one question I have right away is that when you re try to reattach the ovary, would there be scar tissue that would prevent the eggs from flowing? There can always be scar tissue, but this is a relatively straightforward procedure that we can do laparoscopically through the little oh. tiny incisions. And we have to remember that when the ovary releases an egg, it doesn't go directly into the fallopian tubes. It actually comes out and then goes into the fallopian tube. And scar tissue, there can always be scar tissue, but this is an easy problem to deal with. You say it's not with. mainstream yet, so are there any other drawbacks? The biggest drawback, George, and we heard about it in this piece, is right now, this is being used in the area called oncofertility. It's the merging of cancer care with reproductive mm. medicine. So it's used in a woman who's been treated for cancer where her fertility might be jeopardized. So the real concern is when you re-implant that ovary, will you or could you be reintroducing oh. microscopic cancer? That's a little and scary. we just don't know because we don't have enough long-term data. How available is this? Where is it available? It's available in this country, not totally mainstream. The issue is, will we see 70-year-old women oh, doing right. this? Wow. How old? <laughs> Stay tuned. A lot of good information there, Jen. Thanks very much.